Good afternoon, we are back. I am Pete, also known as Risk for Rewards over on Twitter. Obviously, we're building the channel up slowly and steadily, and we are now at around 2,000 followers here on, or subscribers here on YouTube. If you're not following or subscribing and you want to, please just click the link below. Just means as soon as my content goes live, you get it straight away. There's going to be a minimum of two videos this week. One today, which will cover uh, fully uh, the full card tomorrow at York and a bit of Thursday and any of the other uh, days of the week. Um, and then Thursday, obviously, I'll go through and I'll go for Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So that will be released probably Thursday morning at some point. Um, I will do a bit of a write-up and a bit of content um, for the days as we go. But as I found with the flat season this year, less is more. What I mean by that is you do not lose money by not placing any bets. So I've had a lot less bets, especially even on the bigger races, trying to dive through and have five or six bets at, say, Royal Ascot or at Glorious Goodwood. I've just had one or two or two or three bets here and there. So by keeping it less... I've actually done better this year so far and the anti-post has been kind. I know I do play at the shorter end of the market quite often um, but at the end of the day if you're getting a 5-2 to two shot that goes off 4-7 to seven, if they win you still get paid. So at the end of the day we all find value in different ways. So we are not far from the jumps as well so just while we're on the conversation that no one actually asked about um, the jumps are closing in. So we have got Chepstow in approximately six weeks time. And I'm not going to lie, the next six weeks, because I've been planning in advance, the next six weeks are a phenomenal set of racing. In fact, the next 10 weeks, really, you've literally just got jumps cars like Royal Ascot Champions Day. You've got Breeders' Cup coming. Um, obviously, you've got the Arc, the Triumph, all of those. The, I put it this way, the Arc is uh, what we are now, uh, Tuesday. The Arc is, I think, either five weeks or six weeks on Sunday. That's how close everything is. The flat season is almost over. But this, for me, is the best seven, eight weeks where you've got the going across. You've got brilliant flat racing, good start to jump season. Um, so, yeah, we've got all the good content to come. Anyway, I digress. I'm going to try and keep this as short as possible. Um, I have time stamped down the bottom the races that I'm covering. But the three main races will be the three big races on day one. So, straight into it. York 150, starting now, Wednesday. Um, that is the Symphony Group Handicap. There's one horse that I really liked in here, and that was Pilgrim. thought the horse was very progressive. Every start, it takes an awful... You, you need to have a lot for, uh, hidden from the handicap to win any race at um, Royal Ascot. Um, the Palace of Holyrood House is always very um, competitive. And I just thought stayed on very, very well there, um, winning with a little bit tucked up the sleeve because it looked at first like they'd got up on the line. But you look at it and Joe Fanning, whilst he's busy in the saddle, he doesn't look like he's not holding a little bit back um, and only gone up four pounds for the, uh, sorry, only gone up eight pounds for that run, which again, you'd say, OK, maybe maybe that's the end of the progression. But when you look back through, went up nine pounds before, before winning the Royal Ascot handicap. My big concern, which has made me basically say no bet on this horse is drawn in stall 20 as soon as i saw the stall i thought oh 20 is that good or bad and i looked back through equilateral was drawn 12 and the astronaut was drawn 18 but outside of that all of the other um, runners in the last nine years they were all drawn uh, low numbers so like burger act drawn two copper nation drawn three dakota cold was drawn in 10 um, i claimed the nation drawn on nine and i had a look back and watched last year's race and last year's race Makana and JM Jungle were drawn 19 and 20. They came down the far side and arguably if they'd been drawn lower, they probably would have won the race. So I just think you have to have plenty in hand to win that race. I think this horse is still progressive, so I keep it in your tracker and I'll be looking out for future entries. Um, but I, it's enough to give it a swerve. I'm going to have another look at the race later on this evening um, once I know if the ground isn't changing at all. Um, but for now, it's just a swerve for me. Um, the b brilliant race, um, the Acom Stakes. This is not normally as hot as this. I don't know why Appleby and uh, O'Brien have decided to throw a big gun in each. Arguably the two most impressive horses we've seen. They both shaped the top of the markets for the 2000 Guineas and the Derby. Um, and yeah, OK, you could go through and you can make a case for quite a few of the others like horses like Jouncey, Mr. Chaplin, Wimbledon, Hawkeye. They're not far behind, but they are behind. Um, on RPRs and what they've achieved. And the difference is the two at the top end of the market have both only ran, ran once. They come from huge yards. They're renowned for the 2000 Guineas, Epsom Derby and all the big races. So how do we split them? To me, it was fairly, it was a fairly easy 
to begin with because it was looking like Lion and Winter wasn't going to run. Then when Lion Winter was going to run, it looked like, OK, maybe they were going to be very close in the market. But Rolling Court opened up odds on, now trading around 11 to 10. Lion and Winter is now trading around the 2 to 1 mark. Lion and Winter was very progressive um, throughout the race. So started very tardily, um, but grew into the race. And you could just see the way... Um, Wayne Lorden almost took a pull coming to two out, tucked himself back in and then came back around. Still had plenty left to do and got up and won well. Very powerful at the line. Great sectionals and final furlongs. Beat Ides of March into third, who has won since. Um, and there's very little not to like. You would question, OK, well, Ides of March going into that race um, had finished fourth the, the time before. And OK, Ryan Moore was riding a horse with experience. And Aidan O'Brien said after the race, Oh, yeah, Lion and Winter have been working well. Well, if the horse had been working that well, going against Ides of March, who his form previously was an average fourth, surely Ryan would have gone with the newcomer. But at the end of the day, they didn't. My concern for this horse is the way they stayed on so strongly. And you look at just a quick flick through the pedigree, um, your pedigree, see the stars out of water home. Like, you're looking at middle distance races, so towards the derby. Um could get away with it here, but this is a speedy seven furlongs at York. They are not going to wait around, and especially with you've got 10 or 12 um, two-year-olds here on second or third start. Some of these are going to boil over and go rapido. Um, if the Lion and Winter progresses again, obviously could easily take take this race. But for me, this looks like a horse maybe for the mile and further. And also, Aidan O'Brien's already mentioned going to the Bereford Stakes Day, to the Goffs Million Pound Day. Um, and I've had a look back and like he won that last last year with Chief Little Hawk. Um, so whilst I'm not saying that these are like for like, I look at Chief Little Hawk and that's not the sort of two-year-old where I think Aidan O'Brien sat at home thinking this is an absolute superstar. But he's only had one run. He's got very little to base it on, very little to knock. So go in the other direction and you've got ruling court. So whilst Aidan O'Brien likes to bring these two-year-olds along 85%, 90%, 95%, let them grow into their frame and stuff. I'm not saying Charlie Appleby doesn't, but when he gets his two-year-olds going, he's more than happy to get them going properly throughout the rest of the season. And he wants ticks in boxes. He wants wins and he wants to go, go, go. Um, So obviously, if you haven't watched it, Ruling Court easily was probably the most impressive winner of the season so far. Um, went absolutely bolting up. Like, no question. The money absolutely smashing. 8 to 13 into 4 to 9, getting sent off. Um, the third in behind Stanhope Gardens has won since. But outside of that, the rest is a bit of a meh. So you look again, hit the line very hard, bit of real burst turn of foot from, uh, I think it was from three out, and just swept around the field and just said goodbye. Um, that will suit the speedy. Um, the speedy finish of York. Again, the only concern would be Ruling Court and Lion and Winter. Both of them, they weren't the fastest away. Ruling Court had the speed to just whip around the whole field and Lion and Winter did as well, just in stages. I think both these two could be really nice horses. This could be Appleby's, obviously he's got uh, the other one that I can't remember off the top of my head, who won the group, the uh, group one already. Um, he's got... Uh, Two two-year-olds that are top draw. Aidan O'Brien still finding his pecking order. If forced to choose, which I will do because obviously I like to do that, I'm going to go with ruling court. I just think he might be a bit more streetwise. I think the seven furlongs will suit. Um, there's there's not a lot to knock on the pedigree. Justify out of in charge of me. So the shorter trip will suit this horse. I know obviously justify. You're looking at ten furlongs. Um, Dam Sire so High Chaparral 10.7 furlongs again both of them might end up being more towards the middle distance I just thought Ruling Court had a real burst turn of foot um, and Lion and Winter Ryan Moore as we know he won't be afraid to just nurse this one if obviously he doesn't have the speed of the favourite um, so I'm going to stick with Ruling Court wouldn't put you off having a little bit of a, a small bet like a free bet or whatever if you want to take the 12 to 1 2,000 guineas um just as a little, it, it, I'm not saying like, okay, this horse looks absolute standout, goddamn certainty. Um, but I just think ruling court for me tomorrow. And if you're going to play tomorrow, you may as well have a small role on the 2000 guineas. But would I be surprised if Aiden O'Brien's horse won? No, I wouldn't. So stake accordingly. On to the great Voltager. If this was level weights, I'd say Los Angeles, Los Angeles would be a steering job. However, it's not. So it is what it is. However, at the same time, I'm still finding it hard to come away from the Aidan O'Brien pair. Um, I look at Euphoric, very hard to give it a chance. Space Legend, 
the purchase came in and I just think the horse has been so disappointing since. Like the beaten behind ancient wisdom, very hard to fancy. Dear Amal, I can see the angle. Um, obviously beaten behind City of Troy last time out. Um, progressive, but I'm not sure it's going to have the toe for this. Maybe looks more of a St. Ledger horse. Illinois has been my long-term fancy or one of my long-term fancies for the St. Ledger. Um, but I do think he is a St. Ledger horse, as in he will have one mile six furlongs and relish every yard of it. And Aidan O'Brien has said as much. So the concern here is this is over the Derby trip. This is over one mile four furlongs. Don't get me wrong. Obviously, he was he was not unlucky. He ran a brilliant race when he finished second behind so Sozi and in ahead of Tamfana over at Longchamp when staying on. But his last win was over 14 furlongs when staying on well in front of Highbury at Royal Ascot, obviously when winning the Queen's Vars. The Queen's Vars has been a good stepping stone for staying races. I think he is all about the St. Ledger. He could finish second in behind these, staying on well, and then go on to run another strong, really bold race in the St. Ledger. If he's disappointed here, he's going to be a bigger price. Will he go St. Ledger? But Aidan O'Brien has mentioned again and again, he said that Illinois is a St. Ledger horse. My concern for tomorrow, I know he's proven on good to firm ground, is my concern is that this is a sharper trip over 12 furlongs. It's, well, it's shorter than 12 furlongs, even though the class is one mile, three furlongs, 88 yards. Um, and also he has he is carrying a penalty for his victory. So he carries a three pound penalty. He's only rated one, one, three. He carries a three pound penalty that he's got to give to King's Gambit, which would technically put him on the equivalent of, say, one, one, zero, putting six pounds in hand towards King's Gambit. So for me, he will be a very small saver. So if 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 he wins, I don't lose my stake basically um king's gambit okay i get it um i was when the market came up i had in my head los angeles around the even money mark and king's gambit around five to two so far obviously it's early days but any content i've seen read heard there's been a lot of positivity towards king's gambit so maybe this is one of those where the race will finish and i'll just be like okay you the rest were right you were wrong but for me, I'm not really a fan of this horse. I'm not warming to this horse. And I can see the angle getting five pounds from the favourite Los Angeles, getting three pounds from Illinois. Um, very, very impressive in the London Gold Cup when beating Poneros. But that form has not worked out. Outside of Persica winning that form, I've always said at the start of the season, this form will work out. It hasn't really worked out that well. Um, the second behind JRB when we were all, obviously I was on and many others would have been on at Royal Ascot. Um, it was disappointing at the time when very unlucky. Uh, Bellum Justin, who finished third in behind, is Frank the Form when finishing close up behind uh, uh, Jean Bruegel um, at Goodwood. Um, J. B is obviously Frank the Form as well when finishing the other day um, in the... What race was that? It was a Group 2 behind Economics. But I just think J. B stolen two races. Very, very good rides. And obviously that was off level weights. The thing that a lot of people will be looking to here is they'll say, okay, well, let's look at the ratings. King's Gambit is 116, Los Angeles is 118. So King's Gambit is rated £2 below, but getting £5. So in effect, it's £3 well in on the favourite. But I look at where King's Gambit's achieved those ratings, and this brings me on to my final race. The final race was when he finished second in an absolute mess of a race with Passenger, Royal Rhyme and Alphalia. It was a, a 10 furlong race, but they all finished within one and three quarter lengths. But King's Gambit got the run of the race that day. Could have done anything they wanted, dictated from the front. Didn't want to lead, but led at a slow pace. Could have upped it, made it a stamina test. Could have used your turn of foot. Could have done it however you wanted. But a lot of people will point to the fact that King's Gambit's getting five pounds from Los Angeles here. Well, King's Gambit was beaten by Al Failure, and Al Failure was giving that horse on the day nine pounds. Our failure is no well beater. Our failure is a group two horse and a group three horse. Group two winner and group three winner. And obviously we'll come on to that horse in the next race. So whilst they finish in a mess and obviously he kind of got beaten by a horse with a better turn of foot on the day. I've heard a few like, I just, I don't think it's as given that King's Gambit's form is as solid as someone like Los Angeles. Because I now flick across to Los Angeles and he's a dual group one winner, which is why he sat here with a five pound penalty. But he's earned that. And you look at his um, Group 1 last year. His Group 1, he had Illinois in behind, who's obviously won a Group 2 at Royal Ascot since. He finished six lengths behind City of Troy when setting up the race for him. Um, in between that, he won Grade 3 on comeback, beating eu Euphoric five lengths easily. Uh, sorry, one length easily. Um, and obviously last time out, he won the Derby. Yeah, OK, he was 
people say he was staying on. Um, he was clinging on, sorry, in the final finishes against the likes of Van Buren, Friendly, Sunway, etc. And that could be true. Um, but he had to do a lot of the, well, not a lot of the donkey work, but he was out there for a long time staying on. He had a full on battle with um, Ambient Friendly. And once he was done, he then had to then battle off Sunway. So I just think he had plenty to do on that day. And again, he's won an Irish derby. So these aren't like small races. He's getting his numbers from winning group ones, top level. He's been supplemented for 20 grand. Um, and instantly when I thought they've paid 20 grand to put him in, when they already had at the time, Illinois was around the joint favourite. So they're like, why have you put him in? But then when I listened to Aidan O'Brien on the weekend, Aidan O'Brien was saying that with horses like Continuous and other horses, he's trying to fit them all into different areas in order for their path. So this obviously fits in well for Los Angeles because running here, whether you win or run very strongly, um, it then allows you to then plan to go further forward. If you want a really dark horse, like sneaky sort of bet, which could happen, may not. A lot of horses who win this race then go on to the St. Ledger. But I look at the St. Ledger and say Los Angeles wins this, but Illinois finished second or runs a great race. Like he's still looking at for the, the St. Ledger. He's still got... Um, Jan Bruegel, he's got uh, Illinois, he's got Grosvenor Square, who won by no shorter than 20 lengths on the weekend. So he's already got three for that race. And Los Angeles has already been commented twice now when finishes race that he's more than just a ledger horse and he's got a turn of foot. So just if you want a long shot, and obviously you do have faith in Los Angeles tomorrow, he's 25 to 1 for the champion stakes. Last year that was won by August Rodin and in behind was Luxembourg. August Rodin disappointed last time out. Not saying that he won't go there as well. But if Los Angeles can win this and give the weight away, he'd then go back into the champion stakes where he'd be getting weight from his elders. And I think he'd have a great chance each way. I do think he's got a winning chance, but at 25 to 1, when you're going against your elders, it's a no-brainer. Um, but I'd temper your stakes, obviously, because if he's still got to win this to even warrant that sort of consideration. And they might just say, oh, we were going to send him to the ledger. But me, I've based my St. Ledger book around him not being there. Um, so even if he was to win this, I'd like to see Illinois coming in behind. So anyway, back to my point. I like Ellen, I like um, Los Angeles for this. I just think his form has been achieved in the big races. He has got a £5 penalty. And if he's beaten, I will put it down to the £5 penalty and take my medicine. But at the same time, I like Los Angeles. This is going to be ran very similarly, similarly um, to the derby, uh, the Irish derby, I'd like to hope. And I'd imagine Euphoric is in there to ensure that there is pace in the race. It will suit King's Gambit, allowing him to use his turn of foot. But I just think Los Angeles is a better horse. The five pounds may tell the difference, but as I've said, with King's Gambit and Alphalia, if Los Angeles, Los Angeles could easily be in the uh, Judmont um, racing half an hour later, have with his form with City of Troy. What price would he be? Maybe five or six to one ahead of a lot of the other horses because he's getting the weight, because he's a Group One winner and all the works. So if you're if you're at that sort of price, like I see no reason to why six to four isn't more than fair. Coolmore aren't stupid. If you pay 20 grand to get in, I know obviously if he places, he'll probably get his money back, but it's a 150 grand pot. I just don't think that you put a horse into this sort of race unless you think he's got a strong chance. Ryan Moore chooses. So in summary, Los Angeles, if you want to cover or however you do it, when I say a cover bet, it would be say I'm having, say the horse is six to four. I have eight pounds on Los Angeles, two pounds on Los, uh, Illinois. That means if Los Angeles wins, I get 20 pound. If um, Illinois was to win I get £12 profit either way it just means you take Los Angeles from a 6-4 to four shot down to an even money shot and when I think it should be even money anyway then it's a no brainer um, however I do yeah that's that's my view on it Kings Gambit could win but um, it's just not for me so on to the big one we're on to the Judmont International Handicap it's not a handicap at all it's a group one Judmont International States right I will try and do this as quick as possible Hans Anderson pacemaker blinkers on see little relevance to me he went off like a hothead last time spun across set the race up for august roden but he went off too quick august roden got in a pace battle with the godolphin horse they went off too quick set up beautifully for the likes of blue stocking and that french horse uh, the absolute monster called goliath to come through he'll be looking to do to um put some pace into this race but when you look through it he doesn't need to put too much pace into this race i'd imagine he'll stretch this field out enough at the start in order to get city of troy a nice position prominently you go through nearly every one of these runners and I'll, obviously i'll flick through them in a minute a lot of these horses all like to be held up 
So they, there's no reason for them to go and set an absolute rapid pace, allowing all these hold-up horses to have beautiful positions, let the pace collapse, and they can all come through. Because if City of Troy's in the right place anyway, he can quicken off the front and they're laughing. So... I think the main part for Hans Anderson is going to be setting up the race in the early stages. He's drawn three, City of Troy's drawn five. I'd expect him to bolt out and get the field stretched enough that City of Troy can sit in a nice position in behind. Much like the Derby and obviously that he can part the sea. A bit like the way they set it up for August Road and he just wasn't good enough on the day. Um, Royal Rhyme, not for me. Isra, okay, yeah, he travels really well. It was a career best last time out. I just think this is a step too far and I'll be impressed if he can win. Jurezza, I'm not going to stand here and tell you I know anything about this horse. All I can say is I know he's got obviously group race form. Um, he's got top level form. He's won group ones over 15 furlongs. So just a little bit further than this trip. Um, but I'm not going to say that I know anything about him. Uh, Docklands, this is first time at a trip, obviously up to the 10 furlongs. Wouldn't be a horse that I'd imagine that I'd think, do you know what, he really wants a 10 furlongs trip. Uh, Mal June. Has anyone ever spoken about Mal June without mentioning his Ascot, uh, St. James's Palace, staying on form? And the answer is no. Uh, the Blinkers stay on. He was much better behind Notable Speech. And I think that he is being a progress. He is a, a project for William Haggis. Each run, he's getting better and better and he's improving um, and he's coming back to what they expect. And it'd be no surprise for him to run a monster race here. But he is another one who's going to want to hold up. Uh, Ghost Wright, uh, big run behind City of Troy. Um, on the heavy ground the concern for Ghost Rider is I think if you were going to beat City of Troy that was your day I'll be disappointed if we don't see a completely different horse in City of Troy this time out that was soft ground that straight off the race they said it was too soft they shouldn't really have ran for him um, and people there were saying that even though they labelled it as soft it was much worse than that and I've said this about Sandown, Ascot etc they they almost tell the punters and the uh, presenters what they what they want to hear rather than being realistic of what the ground is um, and I think if you had your chance then you've missed it uh, Alflalia as mentioned nice horse three for five at York so enjoys the track um, I just saw we've got the race set up for him by King's Gambit last time out won it with a turn of foot I think this is a good horse without being a top top level horse um, it's finished twice behind August Roden where would you put August Roden in the city of Troy well, on ratings, they're very similar, yet City of Troy in this race is going to get weight from our failure. And we're not talking about a small amount of rate either, we're talking about £7 still. Um, so, again, our failure, I understand the York side of things, but I think the 12 to 1 is probably about the horse's chance. Um, Zarakem finished second behind August Rodin, obviously at Ascot. Um, very hard to weigh up. The French have been coming over and they've been running their race and, and going very well. Um, He's one that I could see going well at a, at a price. Blue stocking, very interesting. I saw quite a few shrewdies putting, them up, putting her up at like 20 to 1, 40 to 1. Um, and when the other Judmont horse wasn't going to be declared, who I can't even think of at the top of my head, um, it did point to will Blue stocking go here. She obviously turns up. Um, the difference is, though, for me, like that was a monster run last time out in the King and in the Quipco Stakes, the King George. Um, but that was an absolute pace collapse that set up beautifully for her. Like Rebels Romance, August Rodin, uh, Hans Anderson, they all made a mess of going so fast and it just paid to sit quietly. And Blue Stocking and Goliath just came through. She was obviously beaten on the day. At the same time, you can't take anything away. She beat Emily Upjohn, but you could argue, is that any good form? Because Emily Upjohn has been very woeful outside of that one run. Um, but she's, she's a better horse than she was last year. She's clearly improving. The concern I'd have here to there was... In that race, she had things in her favour in the fact she was getting £3 from a lot of the big runners. So like Goliath, Rebels Romance, August Rodin, Luxembourg, they were all group winners she was getting £3 from. Whereas here, she'll get weight again from some of her elders, but she's got to take on the kids up front in Ambient Friendly, Calandigan, City of Troy, and she's given them £4. Um, so it's, it's not going to be any easy feat. I just think she is as solid as they come for an each way, each way play, if that's what you want to do. Um, and I do like her, but and it is interesting they've supplemented. Well, they've gone this way, um, but I don't want to back her for win purposes right now. Ambient friendly, I just don't know. If you said to me straight after the derby, where would you want him? Ten furlongs here. Yeah, he'd have a brilliant chance. The way he he, he was just tanking. It was, there was no horse going better at the ten furlong stage in the um, derby. But something's not clicking either. 
it is the 12 furlong trip and when he steps back to his 10 furlongs he's going to be impressive um and he might be the one hard held on the bridle and the other side of things is when he gets pushed is he going to find and that's my question i know he was only beaten a one and a quarter lengths by los angeles and the final nail would be obviously rab havlin if you come down to a finish and i look at ambient friendly is into a finish in this group one classic um, and well, it's not a classic, sorry, but it's a group one. And you, I look at some of these other jockeys in the line. You've got Stephen Pasquier, um, Ross Ryan, Maxim Guillon, Jim Crowley. Like you look at some of these, the majority of those I probably favour over Rab Havlin. But at the same time, does that mean I'm not going to back him on the day? I don't know. A lot will depend on price if he drifts out and stuff. I do think the ten furlongs will suit him beautifully. Um, but I do question what he will find when the when the push comes to shove. Kalandigam. So Kalandigam, when I looked at this originally, I just thought, geez, this horse, it was like 10 to 1. It was bigger than 10 to 1. I thought this horse is going to go be an absolute monster for this race. Perfect. Absolutely bolted up at Royal Ascot. Arguably one of the most impressive um, wins of the, of the week. But the question is, the form in behind has absolutely fallen to pieces. Like I mentioned, Space Legend, and he was absolutely hammered by Ancient Wisdom. Royal Sem- Supremacy ran a solid race. Um, in the same race, but again, was beaten by Ancient Wisdom. Um, Mondo Man has got absolutely smashed since, 7th of 8. Uh, the Euphrates has won since, um, and finished second behind Crystal Black, who's obviously a handicapper. Macduff has been very poor since, so I do question what Clandigan beat. Um, and obviously a lot of people are putting some weight into Bright Picture, but Bright Picture wasn't anywhere near good enough um, when facing up against Economics the other day, beating nearly 10 lengths. So, I can see Kalandigan. I, I just think Kalandigan is very difficult to weigh up. Obviously, we know, obviously, now handles the ground. Has only had five runs. Is completely unexposed. Looks an arc horse, despite not actually being able to run in the arc. Um, could be anything. If you said to me, Kalandigan absolutely ripped this field to bits um, and won, like, smashed it, then, yeah, I could see it. But at the same time, there's enough there, especially with the question marks over. A lot of the form over in France was on the soft and heavy um, with bright picture. That form has not worked out particularly brilliantly. Um, did beat Trafalgar Square, who won recently, but that was winning when dropped in class. Um, as I said, the, the Space Legend form, that is just not worth the paper it's wrote on at the moment. So if you're back in Kalandigan, you're going on what the horse has shown um, visually, more than the fact of the form lines. So finally, in my long-winded way of going round, we've come to City of Troy. And in the simple Leonardo DiCaprio on the Wolf of Wall Street, I'm not leaving. We are back in. We roll with Troy the boy. Backed him at 5-2, to two, obviously anti-post. Did expect him to drift. Interesting to see how it goes tomorrow. He could go off even money. I can't imagine he's going to go off like 4-6 to six or whatever. He could go off even money. At the same time, there's plenty of competition, plenty of depth in this race. He could end up going being 6-4 to four in the morning and then you get someone like Bet365 doing super boosts out to 7-4, to 2-1. to one. I have no idea. All I know is I've backed him at 5-2. to two. I haven't had a second bet. I may have like a double or something with him tomorrow. Maybe City of Troy and Los Angeles or something tomorrow. Um, I was disappointed at Sandown but no less disappointing than what Ryan Moore and Aiden O'Brien were. I think we all expected him just to hack in. Like he was 7-4 to four to win that race anti-post. He was sent off 1-4. to four. That's what you call value. Um, but he scrambled home. Obviously, Al Riffer has won since, and Al Riffer gave him £10 on the day. Al Riffer's won since, and Al Riffer won. I think it was, what, what did Al Riffer win? It wasn't a grade one, was it? Yeah, it was. It was a group one that Al Riffer won, even though it was in Germany. I think Al Riffer's a horse that's, just needs a certain set of circumstances that was his day he traveled all over city of troy but he just said no it's not happening i think that was his time where he had a bit of a rough they learned a few things about him obviously it is still in his early stages and you could stand there and you could knock him but he's had six runs one five the only bomb out was the 2000 guineas people compare him to august road but i just don't see it um i think to be honest I don't know whether 10 furlongs is a better trip over the 12 i thought he was electric in the derby and he was so impressive um I think this will suit him though. He's going to get fast ground and I could go through every one of these horses. So like Kalandigan, Ambient Friendly, Blue Stocking, Zarakan, Alphalia, Ghostwriter, Docklands, Duretza, Maljum, Isra. What do all these horses have in common? I, I may have got one or two. I think I looked through earlier and I'm pretty sure nearly every single one likes a pace, likes to be held up and come from behind. They are not going to want to be sat prominently. They're not going to want to be in the lead. Where City of Troy is versatile. He's one from the front. He's one from, obviously, in the in the rear. 
He's come from wherever you want in the derby. He is versatile. I think that in the pace, the way this is going to go is, as I've said, Hans Anderson will go out and I think City of Troy will sit in behind. He may be in a row of two or three. Ryan Moore will be wise to not get pinned in. He does have his tendencies where, OK, maybe he hung a little. If he's If there's going to be his day, this will be it, in my opinion. I think if there's going to be a, this is his making. And I could easily see if he does win this, this is his ticket to say, do you know what? You've done this. You've ticked your boxes here. Let's get you out to America and see what you can do out there. Um, he's not going to have any excuses, in my opinion. Obviously, he could get boxed in and stuff. But the reason why he's not going to have any excuses is you look at the ratings. He's rated 124. We do get inflated ratings nowadays, but everyone else will be subject to those same inflated ratings. He's rated 124. So he's the highest rated horse in the field by four pounds. He's also getting seven pounds from the majority of the field. So like on just for a complete comparison, Juretza's 120. He's getting seven pounds and he's rated four. That gives him 11 pounds in hand. If you ran this race on AI, just on ratings. Another horse, Alphalia, 118. Um, he's getting seven pounds. So he gets six pounds, gets seven pounds, 13 pounds in hand of that horse. Obviously, you get down to likes of Ambient Friendly, who's on level weights with him. But Ambient Friendly has to... Um, Ambient Friendly is £7 inferior of him on ratings. So if you run this on ratings, AI, City of Troy has got no excuses. If you run this on form, winning an Epsom derby, obviously the the best two-year-old of the season last year, he's won a Coral Eclipse. People don't cut, look back and go, oh, it was really messy, so he doesn't deserve to have a Group 1 to his name. They look back and say, well, what's he done his last two races? He's won two Group 1s, one against his own sex, one against his elders. All I'm saying is, whilst the prices aren't glorious, whether he ends up six to four, two to one, etc., etc., he has got zero excuses, and I mean zero excuses. He might be six to four. It might be a brilliant field in behind, but if there's one horse that could blow this field to bits, it's him. And the problem that I've got is if people say, oh, shall we have a saver? Shall we look through and try and find something to beat him or whatever? I think it's very difficult. There's a lot of competition, but it's hard to nail down which one would be the strongest to say it'll be that one. Would I be surprised if he was beat? No, I wouldn't. But at the same time, I don't think you could have much more in your favour. And if you've took the five to two and you were expecting me to come on and say, oh, no, I'm, I'm worried or whatever, I'm not. I, I, I've i got every faith in the horse. Um, and whilst I'm not going to say go steaming in or whatever, because as I've mentioned, there are 10 horses that you could make a claim for. I just think he's got so much in his favour. He's rated the best, best RPRs, etc., etc. He's got the pacemaker in there. There's going to be very little who wants to go forward. And it'd be no surprise if there's one or two of these that think, I'm not going to give him an easy ride. So they'll go forward with Hans Anderson and he'll end up sat in a row in either like Noah's Ark file, one in front, and then he'll be in probably a two in behind or middle. I don't want to see him held up at the back like a nightmare and we- bobbing and weaving. But I, don't, I think Ryan Moore won't do that anyway. I think it'll be similar to the derby where turning in, he will be up there in the, in the front row. Pacemaker peels off and he's got first crack at it. A bit like August Roden at Royal Ascot. So for me, zero excuses for him. If he loses, then he's just not the horse that they thought he was. Um, on to the 4.10. Quickly on this, Heritage Handicap. Um, I think this is a race where Divine, Co- Divine Comedy was really impressive despite not winning at Royal Ascot. Um, but I do worry about going up five pounds. I think when you win or when you win or go close in those sort of handicaps, um, you get punished whether you win or you finish second, and then it's hard to win off that next mark. But top of the shortlist, um, and the other horse was Great Bedwin. So Great Bedwin, everyone knows how much I like the form with the line of the stars and Fairbanks. I put up Fairbanks, and then obviously a line of the stars got declared. Great Bedwin ran an absolute stormer, only at one pound extra. My only concern for Great Bedwin is he was staying on the strongest of the line. And with another probably half furlong, he would have won that race. But I look back through all his races and he seems to do that a lot. He seems to stay on when the other horses are getting beat, but he goes through into third or fourth. So I just worry about that factor. Um, I am going to have a think about it, but I will put up on Twitter if I'm back in the horse. Seven to one seems fair, but this is a very, very good handicap. Of the rest... Right, I've got nothing else for um, for tomorrow. So in summary, uh, Acom Stakes, um, I do think the front two look stand out. Um, ruling Court is going to be the one for me. I'll have a small play on the Guineas as well at 12 to 1. If you win, you want to be on side twice. Um, Los Angeles and Illinois as a saver in the Voltager. In the Judmont, City of Troy. Troy the boy, let's go. Um, and obviously in the Handicap, um, great bed win, but I haven't backed that horse yet. I will wait and see. Like I said, I'm trying to play less bets rather than more. Um, so a quick look. I just want to have a quick look on if there's anything on Thursday that's jumping out. 
I had a look earlier, but I cannot remember about the prices. Um, Leovani versus Heaven's Gate. No, I, d I don't want to go into Thursday yet. I'm going to wait and see, see what the ground has and how things ride. Um, the only negative I would have on the f is, um, is that I'd either take on or have no bet in the 4.10 with C just in time. William Haggis was really uh, quite quick to say how the horse doesn't take her racing too well. So as in she ran an absolute stormer, looked one of the best uh, two-year-olds of the, of, the, of the season on the 3rd of May. And then just five weeks later, she absolutely bombed behind Lava Stream. I say bombed, she just ran eight pounds below. what She scraped home next time out at Kempton. Um, obviously won very easily, um, but that was only on the 7th of August. So that was, that was a prep. It's still a race not long ago. Um, and she is going to get nine pounds from plenty of these, but it's going to be a competitive race and I'm just not sure she's going to run a race. So in summary, I'm just not going to touch that um, just yet. Uh, the Nunthorpe, I'll be taking on Big Evs. I'm not sure what with. Um, I just don't like how quick all these sprinters run. They do their, they ran like two, three weeks ago at Goodwood. Then they come back out and they're expected to do it again. So we will wait and see, but I will be back Thursday. So whatever you're back, Tuesday, Wednesday, good luck. Um, There'll be all sorts of price boosts and stuff like that. So whatever you're doing, just don't go mental. But I wish you all the, the best of luck. I know I go on too much, but I'm just trying to cover the bigger races in a bit of depth, just with the context for going forwards. Hence why I mentioned, obviously, the Irish champion stakes and stuff like that, um, if that horse was to win. So good luck. And don't forget for the arc, let me just find it. Obviously, I already put up the horse. I already put up. Uh, um, opera singer at 25 sparkling plenty about but 25s sparkling plenty is now back to 20s more than happy with that i'll have a, i'll carry on chipping into that um and firing away for the arc so good luck wherever you're back and goodbye